I love sodium bicarbonate. There, I said it. And I first fell in love with it when I saw this happen. I knew that baking soda was a pretty special ingredient when I learned it could make a volcano erupt. But it wasn't until decades later and years with the Cook's Illustrated team that I understood how truly powerful it was. Here's what is happening inside that explosive reaction in case you don't remember anything before like the age of 12, like me. Inside the volcano, sodium bicarbonate and acetic acid from the vinegar react to produce carbon dioxide, water, and sodium acetate. This is an example of an acid-base reaction. Acetic acid is obviously the acid, and sodium bicarbonate is the base. When mixed, acids and bases neutralize one another and produce salts and other products. Sodium acetate is the salt in this situation, and carbon dioxide and water are the two other products. It's the carbon dioxide that makes the volcano erupt. And it's also what we prize when baking with baking soda. Baking soda in a saturated solution registers 8.3 on the pH scale. It's one of the few basic or alkaline ingredients we have access to in the kitchen. And as we'll see today, it's high pH can work some serious magic, technically science, on what we can cook. While its name would suggest otherwise, baking soda isn't just for baking. In fact, it's one of the most versatile ingredients in your kitchen. It can improve browning, tenderize proteins, and speed the cooking of greens, grains, and beans. But let's start by talking briefly about baking soda's award-winning role as a leavener. As I mentioned, when it reacts with an acid, we get an important product, carbon dioxide. That gas gets trapped within batters and doughs and expands when heat is applied to provide lift and rise. Baking soda is a classic leavener for cakes and quick breads, such as this gorgeous banana bread. It works best in recipes that contain a natural source of acidity. Think sour cream, buttermilk, lemon juice, etc. Recipes that don't contain one of these naturally acidic ingredients will usually call for baking powder, which is a complete leavening system. It contains both baking soda and one or more acids. But even if a recipe calls for baking powder, it will often still call for baking soda. And that is because baking soda does more than just leaven. Let's go to the kitchen and check out an experiment. I'm cooking two pancakes made from batters that were identical except for one ingredient. Both contain baking powder, but only one also included baking soda. Let's flip them over and take a look. Can you guess which one has the baking soda? That's right, this gorgeous brown one. I don't know about you, but that's the one that I wanna eat. The browning in the pancakes is the result of the Maillard reactions. That's when sugars and the amino acids that make up protein come together in the presence of heat to form hundreds of new flavor compounds. And those reactions increase with increasing pH. Baking powder can do all of the leavening work here, but only baking soda can make our batter properly basic for great browning. Properly basic. Someone has to steal that for a memoir title, please. It's yours. You can put this knowledge to use right away. If your quick breads or muffins turn out paler than you want after the proper cook time, try adding a quarter to a half teaspoon extra baking soda for your next batch. Beyond all of that delicious browning, baking soda itself adds its own flavor. It's minerally and savory, which is crucial in something like pancakes. Try a batch without it, and it doesn't quite taste like a pancake. Baking soda's next little trick has nothing to do with browning, or even baking for that matter. It's all about about tenderization. Treating small pieces of meat with a baking soda solution is a technique you quite often see in Chinese cooking, especially in stir fries. A brief soak in a baking soda solution raises the pH on the meat's surface. This alters the charge on the muscle filaments so that they repel each other and remain a tiny, tender distance apart during cooking, instead of collapsing together and squeezing out moisture. The result is largely limited to the surface, so thinly sliced meat and ground meat work best here. Adding a half a teaspoon of baking soda to a pound of ground meat can absolutely transform it, particularly because it has so much surface area. Not only does the soda make the ground meat more tender, it also helps it hold onto more moisture. That plus the higher pH means you can actually brown ground meat without it just flooding the pan with juices. Check it out. We've used this trick on ground beef for chili and sloppy joes, and it's no joke a game changer. So here's how to put it to use in a stir fry. I'm gonna make Cook's Illustrated senior editor Lon Lamb's recipe for cumin beef. We'll combine one tablespoon of water and a quarter teaspoon baking soda, then we add our beef and toss to coat. That needs to sit for just five minutes for the baking soda to do its work. After a quick seasoning step, we add our beef to a smoking hot wok and cook until browned and cooked through. After we remove the beef, we stir fry some garlic and ginger and onions, then add back the beef along with cumin, Sichuan chili powder, Sichuan peppercorns, and a little salt. This smells incredible and tastes even better. And the beef, it is so supple and tender. You can put this tip to use tonight in your cooking. 
For a pound of meat, use a quarter to a half teaspoon of baking soda stirred into one tablespoon of water. Mix it up, let it sit for five minutes, and you are good to go. Up to this point, we've seen that baking soda can stretch beyond its classic role as a leavener. It can improve browning in all manner of foods and tenderize meat. If that's all it could do, baking soda would still be one of the most useful ingredients in your pantry. But we're not even done yet, because baking soda can also save you time. Seriously. Everyone knows that dried beans take a long time to cook. What this experiment presupposes is, maybe they don't? Check it out. I filled three pots each with two cups of water. To one, I added 1% baking soda by weight to turn it alkaline, about 8.3 on the pH scale. And to another, I added enough citric acid to increase its acidity to three. I left the third pot untreated. It registered a neutral pH of seven. Then I stirred a cup of dried black beans into each pot, brought them all to a simmer, covered the pots and put them in the same 350 degree oven to cook. I removed all three pots from the oven after 45 minutes. Now just check out these results. The beans in the plain water had only slightly softened after 45 minutes. They ended up needing to cook for an additional 15 minutes for a total of one hour. Those in the acidic water were still rock hard after 45 minutes. They needed another full hour to soften, but the baking soda beans, perfectly tender. Unassuming as it may seem, baking soda is nothing short of a powerhouse when it comes to quickly softening numerous types of vegetables, beans, and grains. Adding just a pinch to the food as it cooks creates an alkaline environment that weakens the cell walls of the ingredients, so they break down and soften more quickly. Incorporating a smidge of baking soda into onions or shallots while you saute or caramelize them causes the alliums to rapidly soften, so they nearly melt. For polenta to lose its hard, gritty texture and turn creamy, Enough water must penetrate the corn cell walls that the starch granules within swell and gelatinize. When a pinch of baking soda is added at the start of cooking, the pectin in the cell walls of the corn quickly breaks down, weakening its structure and allowing water to enter. That means you can make polenta in half the time. When baking soda is added to the cooking liquid for green beans, their pectin rapidly disintegrates, turning the legumes silky soft in minutes. And adding a half a teaspoon of baking soda to simmering carrots or broccoli for pureed soups helps the vegetables break down quickly and create restaurant level creaminess. Can you think of another ingredient in your pantry that can improve browning in everything from pancakes to ground meat, instantly tenderize proteins, and significantly speed up cooking to save you time? What you can? All right, well, you gotta leave me a comment below and let me know what it is. The fact of the matter is having access to an alkaline ingredient in the kitchen opens up countless possibilities for improving our cooking. Sodium bicarbonate, I fell for you 32 years ago. And over the last three decades, my love has only grown. Thank you for being my best friend, my partner, my sous chef, and an incredible mom to our two beautiful kids. What am I talking about? But seriously, baking soda, you're the best. This is how to eat baking soda? Yeah. This is how to eat baking soda. Thank you so much for watching. I wanna give a big shout out to Nicolas Leblanc for first isolating baking soda in the late 1700s. I'm dying to know when you first fell in love with sodium bicarbonate. Was it standing on the edge of a volcano? Or perhaps when you ate your first slice of banana bread? Let me know in the comments and I will see you next time. Thank you for being my best friend, my partner, my sous chef, <laughs> Thank you for being my best friend, my partner, my sous chef. <laughs> the suspense is killing me. This is going to be so hard.